Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 63. This is part two of our design services example video. We got uh, Jordan from New York City who has a house in upstate New York to send us his listing. So we are hopefully being very kind. He has a beautiful property. We wish that we owned it ourselves. The house was basically a hoarder house. Somebody had generations worth of furniture and junk and whatever, just knickknacks and goo gaws uh of stuff just everywhere and he cleaned it out and he's renting it out so we are going through room by room checking out uh you know ways to improve this airbnb um you can see our services page at notperf.com this is what we offer um we kind of do different uh design advice we do a basic design advice we can do listing optimization and we wanted to make this video just to show what we're capable of. So let's jump back in. Okay, so I looked pretty extensively at both of the main bedrooms, it seems. Um, so I will get much further into the next bedroom, but my first impressions of this bedroom are not bad. Definitely just a few things that we could do to make this room feel a little bit more lived in. So one of the things that we like to talk about are using layers. So thinking about what's on the walls, is there artwork? So starting with that, that's like the kind of first layer and then moving out, right? So what are other things that could be added to the mantelpiece so that it feels a little bit more thought out? Well, you know, someone really thought about what's here and how does it work. Plants are a great layering thing. So maybe there's like a big fern or there's a succulent or something that is low maintenance for you um, as a landlord, but something that adds a little bit of warmth and life into the room. I wouldn't actually suggest a plant for this room because it's green. <laughs> there's plenty of green in this room. But as far as layers go, we like to think about that. Another place where we use layers are bed linens, throw pillows, um, throw blankets, and rugs. So I notice here that this floor, I think it seems like there are a lot of floors in this house that are old linoleum print floors. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it looks like, also what shape it's in. I'm actually not, I, I, don't, I don't feel like you need to pull it out. I, if you wanted to paint it, great. This, in terms of the color scheme of this room, I think a different rug would work for this space. I wanted to suggest this rug actually for both bedrooms. Um, there's another one I suggest for the next bedroom too. But basically it's uh, a neutral color. It's got kind of a chunky loop pattern to it. It's natural. Um, they're doing a 75% discount right now on Rugs USA. Get it on sale, Get right? Get it now. on sale. Good but good really, day. using a big, chunky rug like this and big, put it, make it big. Like it doesn't have to be wall to wall, but in That's a bedroom, a room. I mean, it's a big room. It looks like there's two queen beds in there. I mean, that is a large master suite. Exactly. And so you don't really want to be walking on old linoleum, you know, it's like things stick to the floor and hot in the summertime. It doesn't seem like the whole house is air conditioned, you know, so it's like, okay, like, how can we sort of warm the space up with a rug, make it easy for you to maintain and actually kind of cover that linoleum floor um, without competing with the green walls. So I wanted to offer something that was sort of neutral. Um, and not pattern. So that red pattern carpet is, it's just, it's too small. It's not quite the right color. It's not quite the right pattern. I see what you're going for there. Oh, so if we look at what's in the space, so there's like a little table with a lamp and there are a couple kids chairs. Those things just aren't very practical. So if you think about, does this room have a closet? It doesn't look like it. Maybe there is. It doesn't say that there is. <laughs> now I'm reading a listing. <laughs> Read the um, listing. So uh, another thing I wanted to offer is there's a contemporary um, clothes hanger that you could put in that corner with the lamp. This is a great, super cheap option for putting in that corner. And this is actually, besides being practical, is like a way to make the space feel a little bit more contemporary. 
um, and have that added layer to it. So, you know, I look at those little kids chairs and I think, what would I use those for? They, it feels like they've been put in to have some kind of feeling, but it's like, it, they're not very practical. And so a way to add layers and feeling is by artwork on the walls. Um, and it is a very big space. So the other thing I would do, and I didn't choose duvet covers for this room, but like Ryan said before, those blankets should have duvet covers. So finding something at Ikea, I would say find something that matches. So those, both of those beds have the same bed covers on them. It would be weird for them not to match. I mean, in terms of layers, just real quick, I mean, yeah, you need curtains in there. That will give it a softness. Um, I can see a big round mirror above the mantle with, I mean, you wouldn't need a huge plant. You could have a little plant that wasn't green. I mean, you could find a plant that had a little bit of red or purple in it um, just to give it a little softness. Yeah, it's a huge room. This is a gorgeous room. The color looks nice. I mean, this is not an old fashioned color. This is a contemporary color with the white trim. I mean, you could even have a lounge in there. I mean, get over, over in that corner where those chairs are. I mean, you could have a couple loungy chairs with the whole other, you know, little coffee table and stuff where people can hang out during the day. That I is love that idea. I mean, that is a gorgeous, huge room. I'm like, this is, this could even be like a, yeah, this, this is, this is a luxurious room that should be treated that way. I love that idea. Okay, this room. Yellow room, buttercup. Buttercup room. I actually don't mind. I don't mind. I, I feel like great, nice, bright, yes. cheerful room. No yes. problem. So immediately the things that come to mind are actually that floor looks like it's in worse shape. Maybe the house settled. It looks like there's a big crack down the middle. I would say similar rug suggestion. There's actually another rug that I suggest for this room. This rug is great because it, I actually, it's funny, I walked into my friend's house the other day and she had this rug. She had just like, bought it. Rug. <laughs> and I was like, I know that rug. <laughs> what um, was say? <laughs> so what's great is it's, it's like a totally low maintenance rug. It doesn't have a high pile feels good under the feet and it has a little pattern to it. And what I like about using it for this room is, you know, it sort of uh, gives a little bit more depth to the space. So the other thing that I want to suggest is actually getting a fair, fairly large rug for this room, either this one or the last one I suggested, and actually painting around. If you don't want to paint the whole floor, no problem, but paint the area that the rug doesn't cover. I mean, paint the whole floor if you're going to do that. But if you're whatever, if, if you don't have enough paint to do all the floors, just paint what the rug doesn't cover at least. The other thing I would say about this room immediately is I don't know why that twin bed is in there. It feels unnecessary. I think the only reason that bed would be in there is for a kid because you've clearly got a queen or maybe even a king in there. King, king and tween, twin bed with enough room for an air mattress. So this is like too many people sleeping in that room. Not necessary. I mean, I, my question is like, it looks like a cot with a twin bed on it. If you're dead set on keeping that twin bed in there, it needs a bed skirt. The other thing is the main, the main bed needs a bed skirt too. So I see that you have uh, metal frames, no problem, but they shouldn't be visible. Um, it actually looks like a really nice bed, uh, a really nice headboard. And then when you look down and it doesn't have a bed skirt, it, it feels cheaper. So you kind of want to hide that detail. I mean, yeah, you're like, just cover it, but it's a good example. So here's a bed skirt that actually um, Ashley linked to. Uh, it's really simple and clean and it will probably just disappear, um, which is what you want to do. So uh, again, with this room, we're talking about layers. So there should be some cool piece of artwork over the mantle, not leaning against the mantle, but actually put it on the wall and then put some cool things on the mantle. So it feels like there's a little bit more depth. It's interesting. The other thing I wonder about this room is lighting. It seems like there's one lamp in here. I'm not sure if there's an overhead, but this is the kind of room where 
that bed has plenty of space. There should be two bedside tables. There should be lamps. One of the great things to get is lamps that are attached to the walls and come down on either side of the bed instead of having, you know, standalone lamps. They're usually really easy to find at Ikea. Um, and it just adds that extra little detail. If you don't want to screw them into the wall, that headboard looks like you could get lamps that could clip on as well, which I try to do when I can. And again, this photo is not showing enough of this room. Like, do we have bedside tables? We might, but we're at a weird angle where we can't see if we have that or not. The other thing I wanted to, to suggest is getting a, a, a nice duvet cover. So I linked to two different ones. We're fans of Ikea. They're very affordable. And, you know, we've said in many episodes, things have wear and tear. So we're not talking making, you know, West Elm investments in our linens. You know, at some point it's going to get stained or it's going to get a hole. And so you want to feel okay when that happens. So the two suggestions I make is if you got a more neutral rug with no design, I would say get a duvet cover that has a design. And so the one I suggest is this one from Ikea. Again, there's a little pink in this. And if the house has this whole pink theme, we're just tying the entire thing together. And this also kind of like adds a little interest to that room if you decided to stay with a neutral carpet. If you decided to get a carpet with a pattern on it, I would suggest getting duvet covers that are much more neutral. Especially with that yellow uh, wall. Yeah. Uh, I think th this would look great with a yellow wall and a neutral rug because I feel like it's got kind of that a little bit of yellowish in there, but it's not so bright that you're like, bright wall, bright duvet, like it's too much craziness, you know? So I feel like a lot of my suggestions have been about getting neutral things for this house. And part of it is we're working with pattern floors and colored walls. So I wouldn't suggest neutrals for a house that already has like beige and gray walls. So I just wanted to make that distinction because I think what ends up happening when people put an Airbnb together is they go that route. It's like, I don't know what it is. It's that like Home Depot contemporary it's look. It's, it's really safe. safe. It's safe. You know, like the apartment we're working on right now, it's white walls, it's blonde floor. And so I have to get as much color in there as possible. I mean, some of it looks so stark that I'm like, we need like the create, that Ikea duvet cover comes in green as well. The background's not white, it's like this mint green. And I have that one because I'm like, I need color. Like I have white and blonde and like super Scandinavian, like, modern very stripped down like Brooklyn loft like it's just like white so anytime I can bring color in but you have a lot going on here I mean you have yellow walls green walls there's pink and that's okay and you can work with that but you have to like tone it down in other areas exactly so I just wanted to make that distinction so our our design advice doesn't translate to people thinking that we're just like neutral all neutral all the time so I chose these tables um, from Ikea, again, cheaper, much cheaper on the cheaper side. And the reason why I chose them is your headboard is fairly uh, modern. You know, you don't have like a twirly one, you know, the headboard that was in the pink room was very twirly. It was very antique -y. This headboard is actually very, very contemporary. And so if you want to stay with the white and yellow of the room than just having two very simple stripped down bedside tables I thought would be um, an easy added. And just a note about bedside tables, it's kind of showing in this photo, you want plugs. You want lights on the bedside table and you want plugs very near this bedside table because you want people to be able to plug their phones in at night. So anytime there's a bedside table, you wanna have plugs that are easily accessible. That's just a little tip. This is adorable. Obviously a bunk bed room. Ryan's a fan of bunk beds. I'm a fan of bunk beds because it, it frees up room in the room, right? People can have an individual bed. If they're big enough for adults, that's fine. I think bunk beds are okay. I think they're okay for adults as long as you make them luxe. This one 
doesn't feel too kid kiddy. You know, it's not like you put like circus stripe just for kids. You're like, anyone can sleep here. And I'm fine with that. As an adult, I'm fine with sleeping in a bunk bed. It's fine. So I'm just going to breeze through this one because I think it's easy. Good. <clears throat> Paint the floor. Obviously, it needs to be painted. Get a cute little area rug. You know, rugs, something, rugs, rugs. We something that rugs. feels nice under the feet. Yeah. Um, I would say actually paint that ladder. I was going to suggest matte black yes. um, or an eggshell black. Um, or gray. Like there's a, a fine line between like funky found it in a barn and like it's going to give me lead poisoning. And that barn, that, that ladder is like maybe closer to the, it might give me lead poisoning. The other thing I wanted to add is the little table and chairs it's cute, but again, it doesn't really feel practical, especially if that bedroom ends up being used by adults. It's, it's so, too much for that room. The room's too small. And it just, it feels like unnecessary. So I was going to suggest something more like a low bookshelf that has like books and games in it. Like if you want it to be a kid's room, you know, make a, a, a bookshelf or something that actually you could put things in or put things on top of. But the little tiny chair and the little tiny desk, it just feels unusable from it for anyone except like a five-year-old. The other thing I would suggest is clip-on lamps for the beds. I just want to say we have these at our rental. Like I just bought these at Ikea because when you're low on space in a room, um, having these clip-on lights for people to read at night it are, is totally, not, and this, this is perfect. This bunk bed is perfect for that because you're just, um, you know, clipping it on the edge. You can see they just clip on they're LED, they're gonna last forever. They have different colors at Ikea, like this copper one, super cute. I just bought the black ones. You always want lights on the sides of the beds because people wanna read, they wanna, I, I mean, I have a tiny little clip-on one next to my bedside table. I use it all the time. I don't want the overhead on, I just turn it on and I'm like reading in bed. And it's LED so it doesn't get hot. Yeah, and it lasts forever, so you're good. Yeah. Okay, so you have another another full bathroom. Like, God, so many people can sleep in this house. Like, there's so much room. It's really an amazing rental. I mean, to have another full with a historic clawfoot tub is amazing. The color looks good. Um, the white tile looks good. You could have some art on the wall or a mirror, a uh, colorful piece of art behind the toilet. Um, something we always say is have a basket behind the toilet, and I always put lotion like unscented lotion or a nice fancy natural lotion uh tissues and then like a room spray it, also with this photo we don't see the sink we don't see the other part of the bathroom which i would love to see uh, i feel like it needs a different rug yes it needs a different rug i feel like a more colorful rug or just a funkier like a better pattern that's not just plain could go a long way like this room could look so cool Okay, this room is super confusing to me. Like my notes are like, there's a computer here. It looks like someone's work desk with a pile of old newspapers. And I'm almost like, are guests allowed to use this? The subtitle of this is just the name. It's like the default name of the Airbnb, which happens when you don't type anything in. So I'm kind of just like, what this room is super like, is, could it be another bedroom? Like, what is it? Also, my suggestion was actually take that framed flag and put it on the wall. Right. It should go on right that on that wall. huge blank wall. Yeah. And then find something interesting to put on the mantle. And it, like that room would be great with just that. It looks like this. So we can't tell, obviously. Uh, this goes into the room with the TV. I think the TV room's over here. And this tobacco, I'm assuming it's a chair or a love seat go put that in the room where the blue recliner is. Get rid of the blue 100%. recliner and this looks like it matches that other couch. So that should go in that room. Yeah. And and please explain to people what this room is and get rid of the desk. Of, I mean, that that's a fancy iMac. I'm assuming people aren't supposed to use that. So I don't know what's going on with that. And it's hard to tell how the room is set up, but anytime that a desk doesn't necessarily need to be like floating in the middle of the room like maybe there's some other way it could be situated so it feels a little bit more like that room could be used in other ways just a suggestion um, yeah. I also again gonna keep harping on lighting maybe there's like a floor lamp that could go by that rocker if in fact people end up using that room 
And if this room is usable, take the other angle of it. I'm like, what is on the other side? Is there a door? Where does it go? I, it's really hard to get people to understand how the house is laid out. Um, that's another thing we always suggest is to draw, either hand draw or you could do it on the computer, like the layout of the house. Okay, this is the pink bedroom. This is the green bedroom. This is it. So you're like, oh, that one's next to that one. And that one's on the second floor. Like, it, it, it's tough to, if you've never been in the house, you're like, where is this stuff? Especially for families, you know, families with multiple children or children who have whatever needs. It's like trying to figure out where, what parent's going to sleep with what kid and all that stuff I think is always helpful. Okay. So our first question was, is it necessary to show the laundry room? And I think with a house like this, where there are going to be families, it's, it's good to be very clear. Like there's laundry. Like I've had people be like, oh, where's the washer? And you're like, I never showed a washer. I never mentioned a washer. There is no washer in this house. I have a washer in one house, but the apartment that we're about to put online doesn't have one. And our second, you know, renovated house doesn't have one. There's just no room. It's a vacation rental. Um, I wish, I wish that I could do that. So I think it's good to show this photo, but uh, these appliances are from the 70s and it looks dated and it's so cheap to replace with like front loaders. People get rid of them all the time. They're like, I got a brand new front loader and these ones don't match my decor or whatever. And they're like $300. And that would look really nice, especially for families. They're like, great, it's modern, it's ready to go. You know, I think that's fine. I think you should replace your appliances. One suggestion I had was, you know, just tidying up the shelving a little bit, like maybe just get a few baskets so everything can live in there without just being out. And, you know, maybe it's just for picture purposes, but it just feels a little bit like there's a random hat on the wall and there's like some other weird thing that looks like a picker upper thing and you know it's like it just just kind of make it feel a little bit more organized like when you walk into the laundry room you're not going to find random soap that the last person left there right although it does look like you have kirkland bulk laundry detergent so that's great i think people will appreciate that and, and it, i think it is good that you showed this photo okay this is like my masterpiece right here okay this should be your first photo this <laughs> yay is, this, this photo is adorable this is great the lighting's perfect you, you it looks like you cleaned up the front i think you either fix the gutter or you painted. So I, I, your house is adorable. I love the chairs up front. My only suggestion is I would love to see this house painted a color, like a historical color. So what I did actually is I brought this photo into the, it's called the personal color viewer on Benjamin Moore. And I, it's a little bit sloppy because I had to like pick the selection that I wanted. Um, let's take a look at one. So this is one that I did that's green. Although there's a lot of green in the, it seems like in the summer of this, you know, area. So green might be a little overkill. But what I did was I, you can see here, it's the Williamsburg color collection. So it is like a colonial historical color collection. Like you can see there's like all these funky um, colors here uh, that, are, that are historic uh, of that time. So this one's Dunmore green and carriage red for the door. Um, my other one, so green's not my favorite one. Um, this blue is kind of cool. I always love this kind of like colonial blue it's called palace blue with the red basically i wanted the the door to match the chairs kind of like a barn red like a rich like brick red um but honestly my favorite one is the yellow one cute this, i mean the yellow like it's not quite the yellow of that bedroom it's not mm -hmm. like a buttercup yellow it's a little more of a like a dusty yellow i mean they call it sweeney yellow it looks very bright on here, but, but this is why I actually love this website is you can just say, okay, change out the yellow. Okay. That's a little more gold. This is a little more light. That's like really white. Um, you could come down here and just, you can just change it out. Like that looks gorgeous. It's like an ochre. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. That's palace ochre. Palace. It is ochre. That's so funny that I said I didn't even read that. But yeah, I love ochre. It's a gorgeous, rich color. It would look gorgeous. 
Now, the reason I picked this color is I actually looked at other Airbnbs in your area, in, in, in your town, actually. And it is this color, and the opening photo is this in the woods, and you're like, oh, I want to stay there. Like, that is the first photo, and you're like, that is so cute and cool, and I want to stay there. So, you know, obviously painting the house is an expense. People want to stay there. What a cool porch. You want to hang out there. You want to grab a glass of wine and be out in the woods and away from New York City and hang out there. In a right? tiny jewel box. Like, people want to stay in a tiny jewel box. Yeah. They want a little fantasy. And that's what and the do. inside of your house has a lot of color. So there's right. like a little inside out rule. <laughs> so Benjamin Moore is great. I had fun. I was like, oh, it was the first thing I did when I saw the listing. I was like, I'm grabbing the photo. I'm going into Benjamin Moore and I'm going to like do my own little color. My color so scheme. fun. Yeah. So fun. Number one, this should be your number one photo. It's so cute. I would want to stay there. And I would suggest doing, um, you know, doing the, that house photo first and then followed by bedrooms. Yeah. So that's like a whole episode that we can do because you're like, like show the good stuff first. Like what do people want to see? They want to see where they're staying. They want to see bedrooms. They want to see bathrooms. They want to see kitchen. And then you can get into the rest. Um, and then you can show the outside and then you can show like we're going to see, like this should not be the last photo. This should be, you're walking into the house. What's the next room you see? Or let's show a bedroom and then do the walkthrough. Exactly. As far as Airbnb goes, when you're just flipping through Airbnb, especially if you're on your computer, it lets you preview the first few photos. Right. Now it does. Yeah. Instead of having to click on the listing first. So the first few photos should be like, the best, like the best of the best. They need to be your selling point because, because you need people to click through to your listing. You need them to, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're like, and then here's the weird bunk bed room or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. that's not first, that's important. And it's good that you have it, but you're like, let's show, you got to show the gold. Like you got to show the, the, you know, the candy <laughs> first. Right. And your kitchen is not, is not yet the, the, the gem of the house. So, right. so show the best, show those that huge bedroom, that green bedroom with two queen beds. You're like, great. Like I claim that bedroom. Like, yeah. Jay and it's I like, are staying in there and we get our own bedrooms and we have a lounge. family reunion heaven. Totally. Yeah. And put a TV in there. <laughs> like we're not leaving this room, you know? So this house is huge. You cannot tell. So I'm assuming that this is the front, like this is the front porch and everything. It looks like you have another side porch too that I don't think you ever, sh this house is huge. This house is huge. This photo makes it look small. So it doesn't come across. Right. But it looks small and cute and I want to stay there, but you're like, yeah, it does sleep 10 people or more, you know, the yard is huge. Like this is, this is great. Um, it's massive. Yeah. You have a huge property. You should, I don't know. I'm terrible at reading listings. I don't know if you said the acreage, it's good to say the acreage. Like, do you have three acres? Cause people are going to love that. Cute. Great photo totally want to hang out there. Great photo. Actually, I would say that photo is better. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cause you have more, you're like, there's the house. This is how far away it is. Yep. Um, I'm going to jump back here. I was thinking what might be cool back here. It's cool to show the backyard, but it would be great if there was, um, a barbecue outside and like some seating and maybe even, I don't know if you're allowed to do this. It depends on your area or if you would even want it, but have like a little fire pit, like, you know, a backyard, just dig out the grass and put some like gravel and like some little like wood stumps around for people to sit and basically do s'mores, like do s'mores under the, under the stars at night. Like people are coming from New York city and they're desperate to do that. Like they come right. to our rentals from DC and New York city and New Jersey. And they're literally like, we just want to make s'mores under the stars with a campfire because we live in the city and we never get to do that. You know, that's like the dream. So, I mean, I don't even do that in my backyard and I live in the country. So I love doing that too. Yeah. That's a cute photo. So this is the, this is the, this is the first photo. So you know, we've gone through it. And so let's all agree that that should be the first photo. 
Okay, so that's it for our video design review. Uh, thank you for sending your listing, Jordan. It's a beautiful property. We, we hope love that, it. We love it so much. Like I actually cannot believe how gorgeous it is. So I think you've done a lot of work. We know you have, you cleaned it up. Um, and I think that uh, you can make a lot of simple changes that don't have to be expensive to really make it uh, one of those listings that people are like dying to go to from from the city and from anywhere. So if you want to book design time with us, this is our little design advice page. You can find it on the blog up top, our services, or you can go to notperf.com. Um, you can see we have different tiers. We also have a custom tier. If you need stuff that's not on here, we can do it. You can see that you can just buy, you can just click on here and buy through PayPal, or you can email us, um, but it's really easy to just book with us on the site right there. Um, and we're excited. I mean, this is stuff that we just talk about for fun all the time anyway. Obviously we have an entire podcast about it. And we think that we can help people have really beautiful, comfortable, cozy, successful rentals. So that was our video episode, part one and two of shampooandbooze.com. And we'll see you at our next podcast. Bye. Bye.